Howdy folks, all right, picking up here with chapter eight. So we are going to really start uh, getting into it um, and applying this quantum mechanics business um, to real practical physical systems, okay? So uh, the first problem that we're going to do here is the very famous uh, particle in a box problem, okay? Um, sometimes this is also uh, referred to as particle in an infinite square well. All right. So uh, here's our box. Okay. Right. Um, so we're establishing this is a one dimensional box. So the particle is free to move, um, you know, to the right or to the left. Okay. And we will say that the potential energy inside the box is zero and the potential energy outside of the box is infinite. So this is where this is also sometimes referred to as an infinite square well. So this is, uh, you know, a well that our particle was trapped down in. And because it's infinite potential energy outside of the box, the particle can't escape. So we often will say this particle is confined to this box, okay? The particle is confined to the box or the infinite square well, okay? Well, here's what we know already. We actually already know a fair amount about this particle in, the, in our box, okay? So we know the Schrodinger equation, right? H psi equals E psi, okay? And so if I expand on that, right, recognizing here that my uh, Hamiltonian operator, right, is going to be negative h bar squared 2m times the second derivative. And um, because we're saying the potential energy is zero, right, um, I can ignore that for now. So this is all kinetic energy, okay? Um, so we've solved this problem already, right? We did this in the chapter seven lecture notes, okay? And when we used the Anzatz method, we got all imaginary solutions, okay? Which means our general solution for the wave function can either be written as A E I K X um, or B times E to the negative I K X, all right? Uh, or excuse me, sorry, it can be written as um, a to the e i k x plus b e to the negative i k x, okay? Or, so right, I'll say, you know, either of these are correct because we know that we can convert sines and cosines into e to the i k x's and e to the negative i k x's, um, and vice versa, okay? So we can use either one of those solutions and I'll show you which one we'll use as a matter of convenience. Um, we also get that now the eigenvalue, right? E energy equals this, K squared times H bar squared divided by 2M, all right? Now I didn't quite show you, we didn't quite get into that eigenvalue in the previous slides. What we came more of, uh, what I was more interested in showing you is that solution for k. So we established that k is a collection of all of our constants, right? And that was equal to 2me um, divided by h bar squared all square root, okay? So we can rearrange that to for e, um, and that gives us our eigenvalue, okay? So the eigenvalue in terms of energy can be written as such. Um, or the eigenvalue in terms of wave number can also be written that way, okay? So these are all things that we've established. So now what we want to do is uh, we're going to pick on the sines and the cosines function um, to play with for now, okay? So we need to solve a, for a more specific wave function. So this is a general solution, but we need to apply find a specific solution. And that specific solution is going to be for our boundary conditions. And our boundary conditions are established by this physical picture, okay? So here's what we know with the boundary conditions, 
Okay. The potential energy is infinite at um, x less than or equal to zero, as well as x greater than or equal to L. Right? So in other words, outside of the box, the potential is infinite. But we know that the potential is zero for x, uh, let's see, greater than or equal to zero. Or really, I should say, um, for x between zero and L, right? So potential energy equals zero for when x is between zero and L. So what this also means is the value of psi when x is equal to zero must be zero, okay? Similarly, the value for psi at x equals L also must be zero. So that's part of confining this particle to this box. We're saying the wave function, in other words, the particle, can't exist outside of the box, all right? So now if we plug in these boundary conditions, okay, so if we say psi of zero now equals um, C, right, times the sine of K times zero plus D times the cosine of K times zero, what do we get, okay? Well, look, I put a little sine graph right here just to remind us that um, the sine of zero is zero. Aha. Uh -huh. So that means this whole thing drops out to zero. Well, what about when, uh, what about the cosine at zero? Well, recall here, um, so that this is sine of x. So cosine of x is shifted 90 degrees, right? Um, so that looks like this for my cosine, okay? And now we can see uh, the cosine at x equals 0 is 1. Well, we know that the psi of 0, this whole thing has to equal 0. Okay? So what this tells us is this d constant has to be 0. Okay? Because once again, psi of 0 has to be 0, as given by our boundary condition. We know the sine of zero is zero, so that drops out that whole term. The cosine of zero is one, so that tells me that this coefficient d has to be equal to zero, okay? So now we'll reestablish that we know that psi of x has to equal c times sine of kx, okay? Um, we know that when x is 0, sine of 0 is 0, so that's good. We've established that boundary condition, okay? Um, and so now what we also have to say is psi, when x is equal to L, we know that has to be 0. So that's going to be psi, a C times sine of, and I'm going to replace the x with L, KL. And we know that that also has to be equal to 0, all right? And further, we know this C constant cannot be equal to zero um, because we have to have this normalization constant there. So what's going on with this thing? Okay, so how do we solve this sine KL equals zero? Well, we can say that the sine of K times L has to equal zero. I don't need to worry about my C coefficient, my normalization constant, okay? And now if we go back and look at the sine graph here in the red for a second, look, we actually already have the solutions, okay? So we know that sine is zero at x equals zero, right? At x equals one pi, at x equals two pi, three pi, 4 pi, et cetera, okay? So what we can say now is this quantity k times l has to be some integer value of pi in pi 
and specifically um, because we can't have n equal to zero because we've already established that up there, psi of zero. Um, and we also want to establish this for positive numbers, okay? We're going to say that n equals one, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera. Because now, right, for each KL, if a KL equals one pi, we know that's gonna make it equal to zero. If KL equals two pi, well, that's also gonna make that equal to zero, okay? So now, not only have we established solutions, but we've established solutions for various integer values n, so let's keep going with this, okay? So now what we can finally do here is say, well, KL has to equal n pi, all right? But we know that that's also got to be, um, so if I rearrange here, now that means this k is going to be equal to n pi divided by L. It still also equals this, okay? That, that hasn't gone away. It still is equal to that. But we're going to see that we can combine these results algebraically. And so now if we know one way to write k is n pi over L, then we can write this wave function as c times sine of n pi over L times x, okay? Where again, we remember that n is one, two, three, four, et cetera, okay?